I'm a Jeep owner. <laughs> <laughs> very nostalgic person and these are the sneakers that I wear every day my dad's shoes the dog eats them I don't care because I have no one to impress but little known fact is that I actually have a somewhat decent collection of sneakers that I never wear why do I have them well over the course of several years I bought all the sneakers I lost it after when I was a kid and I put them in a box and never wear them because I mean I'm not in high school anymore nor am I cool enough to actually pull them off but hey they remind me of a different time in my life the same goes for the cars for example, my prize possessing the Z06 reminds me of my mother because she's the one that fostered my love for cars. When she was younger, she saved up enough money to buy a Corvette, then unfortunately she got really sick, went to the hospital, and the doctors told her she was pregnant with me. So there went her dreams of the Corvette because they don't have back seats for kids. Funny enough, one week before my daughter was born, I went out and I bought a Z06 because, well, it reminds me of my mom and the fact that I'm not gonna get little parasites that look like me get in the way of my dreams. The RS7 has its own nostalgia too because it was the first gas-powered car on the channel that signified I'm not just a one-trick pony after doing Tesla stuff for so many years and that I'm an actual enthusiast and I like other cars. It was also a big risk bringing a gas car onto what was previously a Tesla channel, but I'm still here, so apparently it worked out. The Humvee, well, my brother's Marine, so it reminds me of him, and I have a strange obsession for off-road badass vehicles, hence the Sherp and the Cyberquad. The BMW i8, well, I was contemplating selling it, and then one day my dad came over and said, what is that? I like that. And if your dad's anything like my dad, he doesn't talk much or really state his opinion on anything, but when he does, you should listen. So if he says he likes my car, then that means I'm one step closer to maybe him saying I love you and I'm proud of you. So yeah, anyways, nostalgia hits me pretty hard, and my actual work truck, the Duramax, will be going under the knife in the next couple weeks to get compound turbos, 100 over injectors, and really fun diesel stuff. So I said to myself, I can't go without a truck for that long, so I need something to move ice tea, the V8 Tesla swap, and the Sherpa around, and whatever projects we work on on the channel. People may say, Rich, why buy another truck when you could just borrow a friend's truck or rent one? The Duramax will be down for like two weeks. Can't you go two weeks without a truck? I don't need that kind of negativity right now. I've removed those people from my life. Now, I don't need or nor can I afford another diesel truck, but I wanted something I can haul with and doesn't look like everything else on the road. So being a GM fanboy, I knew I wanted to stick with GM. And what GM truck is my favorite? The square body. Now, what historical significance does the square body have in my life? Well, my mother used to drive me to school in a K5 Blazer from the same square body generation of GM trucks. Yes, my mom is a badass, okay? Then I started looking at C10 trucks when I found this gem, an absolutely stunning truck. It was black, just like my mom's K5 Blazer, and gorgeous. You know what wasn't gorgeous? The price. But after seeing a square body dually, I had to have a square body dually. And if you know anything about these trucks, they're very hard to find. And when a nice one shows up, it's usually sold pretty quickly. So after browsing Facebook Marketplace, I found this gem, and wow, would you just look at it. All patinaed out, slam dually, I have to have it. Only problem is it's in Texas, and I'm about a 19 hour drive from Texas, so it was a no-go to check it out in person. This is not me realizing that they have these new things called planes, and I could use one to get to my destination fairly quickly, but I digress. So I asked the seller for more pictures, and he sent me these videos. Well, the videos aren't bad and that patina isn't real. It's painted on, which is kind of odd because these trucks don't have any issues rusting by themselves. But adding fake rust on paint is a big, nah, but it still looked kind of cool from afar. Now, the videos were vertical, so I knew I was in trouble because who takes vertical videos unless you're a TikToker or 74 years old and take photos with the iPad that your grandkids got you? So it does have some paint issues, a questionable interior, and so I did the thing that many car people fall into. I thought with the wrong head and ended up buying what I want to be my dream truck, sight unseen, and like an idiot, wired my kid's college fund to a complete stranger in Texas because I'm impulsive and I make poor decisions. Speaking of Texas, you should buy a shirt. What does Texas have to do with the shirt? Just listen. You know those old guys that have a field of cars for no reason? Not Jay Leno or Seinfeld. I mean this regular guy. A guy that lives in Texas or New Hampshire and he buys cars because of nostalgia purposes and doesn't sell any of them 
because they reminded him of some event in his life. He's like a hoarder and his kids show up like, dad, you need help. The town gets involved because his car collection is posing an environmental hazard and they can't throw him out because he's black and it'd be considered as a hate crime. Well, that's going to be me. I guarantee it. And buying a shirt, you can walk around proudly to let everyone know you're a firm supporter of car hoarding. So click on the link in the description box below to buy one or one of the main designs available. Then hit that subscribe button because I bought the truck like an idiot and it was dropped off in my driveway. We're going to show you the concept of why nostalgia is a dirty liar that makes people think things are better than they really are. Steve on. Yo. It's time, baby. Today's are, the day. Are you excited? Delivery day. I'm excited. It's a new vehicle. Yeah, too. I mean, who doesn't want a new vehicle in their life? You know what I mean? Who doesn't true. want another ball of stress in their life somehow? So they dropped the car off, right? But I was told by some neighbors there was a loud dragging sound. And yeah, I, mean, I know. There's a loud, that's all I heard is a loud dragging sound. There were some issues getting the car off transport and also getting it running, staying running. Apparently that was a yeah I know yeah so I'm not thrilled oh, exactly. I'm a little concerned, huh? Yeah I know. Oh, there she is. Okay. Right. Let's uh, let's park. Let's uh, take a look. All right. Kind of curious. I mean, she's lost. So far I'm liking it. So far I'm liking what I'm seeing. Oh dude. So I had a '87. It wasn't dually. It's fleet side. Mm-hmm. But it had dual gas tanks. Yep. I love the shit out of that truck. This is. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. This is the one. I mean, she, it looks pretty damn cool, man. I gotta say. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Let's take a look at it. The white walls match the uh, Texas plate. I like it, dude. I like that plate. I didn't know the guy was gonna send the plate with it too. Slam. That's piece. pretty damn cool, man. That's not a double entendre or anything. I like it a lot. Okay. All right. I can see it. She's low. All right. I'm well. A fan. Uh, Part of those. The paint isn't exactly what I thought it would be. Yeah. To be fair, we talked about this, and yeah. rust paints are. Yeah, but this this is a little bit worse than rust paint right here. Like that's that, that's actual rust. That's actual rust. Yeah. Look right here too. It's bubbling and cracking. Green. And it was green underneath at one point. Yeah, the paint. Yeah. I thought it was like a, a decent rust paint job, but I guess not. Said who? Well, I, I guess by the pictures I thought it, it would be just that, but I guess I was wrong. It's cracking here too. Jeez Louise, man. What in the necrophilia is this? <laughs> Sir? Steven, what, those are some... What, what, what are these? Those are some things. What are those? What's that? There's skulls on it. That's cute. Yeah, there's skulls. There's uh. Oh no. More rust bubbling up here. Yeah, that's legit. The, the guy problem. told me, listen, there's hardly any rust on it. So far, I I don't think that's the case. We've been bamboozled. I've been hoodwinked. That window's cracked. <laughs> but the, no, no. He says he sent two doors. They put them right there, which is cool. So we'll check those out. So that's more paint flaking off. I didn't even think green was a color for that year. No. I, I think this was brushed on. Look at those like brush strokes on there. It's like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle green. Another skull. Yep. Another skull. Mm. Skull, skull. The hood's already popped. I think they had some problems starting it. So maybe they were checking a few things out, but you could see at the back, there's actually drag marks here. So this thing was probably tilted down and just dragged across the whole driveway. More skulls, more bad paint. Even the seagulls in the sky are yelling Dude, at check us. check this out. Look at this. But he did send two doors. I'm looking at the doors right here. And um, he's like, no, the doors are fine. Are these doors fine to you? What do you think about those doors? What do you think about those doors? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. No. Oh. The glass is good, it looks like. <laughs> I think that's what he meant. It's a, yeah, it's a DIY, repair your own glass. It's, it's because he, they the, were too lazy the to take glass The glass in out. the doors is good well, since these back ones these are, are all cracked. Diffed up, yeah. Yeah, that's all cracked rear glass. These are five different colors. I don't even know what's going on here. Is that Linda? That's her. And she's also gonna crack late, she's gonna back into our vehicle. Can you imagine? Honk. Hi, family. Hello, fam. Linda, it looks like you jogged here, but you you didn't, because yeah. I just saw you pull in. You didn't jog so. here. There's no way. I like your, uh, your Jesus sandals. <laughs> the Air Jesus 13s. Air Jesus 13s. 
Okay. These are like run, these are running shoes. These are oh. like running trail shoes. Are you clowning on shoes, Nima? No, I was. Are you judging? Are you, are you shoe <laughs> shaming? <laughs> She's shaming. They look, they look like cleats for like. Yeah, no, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, like, oh. Like, those yeah. are the speed cross threes, Linda. Are, this is the new truck. Oh my god, we could put like a bed back here. Mm -hmm. And then go to like a drive-in and do like a movie night. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, you should do that. Peace. <coughs> what is slam piece? Um, slam. How, do, how do we tell her? Slam. It's, it's, it's this is, you know, vulgar slam. It's, it's, yeah, it's vulgar. Like, how pitch, can that be slam pitch, piece? Like, okay, what's a slam pig? A slam pig? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to change that. Oh, You're gonna have there. to change that. <laughs> Stay right Not there. liking that. What do you think of the interior of this truck? I think that it's. Oh, what is this? Oh, I don't want to know what those are used for. These? Yeah, they're they're gold balls. They're called Benoit balls. Mm, so why? In ancient Chinese civilizations, uh -huh. they used to use these and insert them inside you. And the thing was, you would do like Kegel exercises. And as you flex, they would clink together and create vibrations that are very, very. They only come in one size. One size fits all. <laughs> The sound of desperation. Yeah, well. Well, at least there's black ice. Yeah. I guess I'm not surprised by that. Yeah, no, no, I mean, no one, we expected this at, at this point. Yeah, that smells more than. Yeah. I don't know what the smells are there. Okay. But... You know what that means? Jump the pack, baby. So I got the van running, quote unquote. I let it sit and idle for about 15, 20 minutes or so. And then suddenly, guess what? It doesn't work again. I don't know what's going on with this damn thing. I have a jumper pack on it. And for some reason, that's not really working out so well. So there's definitely an issue going on with the car. I can't wait to get this thing pulled and figure out what's going on. But either way, there's a tow truck coming to get this thing to the shop because I really don't want to risk it. And this is getting kind of annoying here, so. It's BK. That's me, <laughs> man. How are you, boss man? You good? Yeah. What, so wait, now you know me, is this, is this free or what? It's gonna be free? <laughs> You're still laughing, is that a no? Yeah, this has to get towed, so we gotta figure this out. This is my new project and it doesn't run. So I gotta, I gotta figure something out. Well, I'm glad I took this first call in the morning. Rich, what? where do you find this crap? Jesus Christ, Jesus. It follows me. I was even trying to get it. It's blatantly not true. Look, look at how his pants match the truck. That was no accident. Every, yeah, none of it's an accident here. Hey, there's already a Vermont temporary tag on it. <laughs> yeah. Isn't she great? Chad's face. She's rough. She's a rough she's a rough girl. She's rough. That's that's rough. So, oh, that's bad. <laughs> the battery, nope, that's not held down. Look at this. This is a ground. How you like your grounds? Not grounded? Oh god. That's not grounded. Uh, the zip ties galore. I, I did not put them there. I like the multiple power feeds because it's like they're using posts up here, they're using those posts down here. No, yeah, but what does this even do? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, it's just That's, disconnected. There's a lot of stuff that was disconnected. Careful, if you connect it, you might cause something the, else. The truck might work. start working again. <laughs> yeah. Um, or something will catch on fire. I like the uh, the, the, the Rockford Fosgate yeah, that's lamp. Awesome. That looks like it was a positive beaten wire. On. And it was also, slammed on it there. also melted at some point, doing uh, who knows what. Mm, uh, butt connectors mm. galore. Yeah, is this fuse even good? Uh, who knows? Relays just dangling in the breeze. I, I mean, I do like the fact that they. That's did, it's real safe. I do like the fact that they did spend some time and energy on the stainless steel. The hard lines are cool, and the the remote filler. Yeah, the fact that you can use compressor for emergency, but right. after, after that, it just kind of disappears. Oh, I, I saw this door. Dude, right? How thick? That's a quarter of an inch right, thick. Watch this. Watch this. Just to give you an idea how thick it is. Look how look how thick that is with my blade behind it. Right. There's like six layers of. Why? Why? I don't know. Why? Why? I don't know. It does, but that also just. I don't. I don't. I don't know. So the truck was green at one point, purple at another point. You can still see the purple on the inside of there. 
Uh, then it went to black. Then it went to awkward taupe. Was color. that was that a uh, oh, yeah. check? You use your knife to get some more of that out there, please. Thank you. Oh, Ooh, this is it's ham. I'm gonna need this when I get the color matched. Yeah, right. Excuse me, sir. Can you color match this? So it was. Oh wait, this is a wrap. Yeah. Is that wrap? No, that's just a really thin. That's like uh, rattle so can. It, so it was purple. Yeah. The original oh. the original color is blue. Then they sprayed at least on the door. Yeah. Jeez, See, that's just a paint. Yeah. That's so there's a black, there's a purple, there's a green underneath, there's a blue. That's cool. There's a taupe. Yeah. Archaeology is happening. Yeah. Seriously, you might you might dude, you might find some like rare dinosaur eggs in there. And it gets better. Oh, there's more underneath over there. Oh, look at this. The relays. Look, at, look, look at this menagerie. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's really, really hard one, twisted wires. To oh, oh, there's a there's an air horn on here. <laughs> there, there is an air horn. I think that's I saw it. Probably what that's for. What is that? That's the air horn. Uh -huh. See it? Okay. okay, that's why the, there's a disconnected thermal there. That's yeah, that's that could be for the air horn. Let's give it a hop. Oh shit. Oh, the, oh, the batteries. Oh, that's that, that doesn't work. The first thing I tried. I think that's that's what this relay that's is for. Bad. Yeah. Okay, before we pull the battery, I want to get used to a lot of the nonsense that's on here. I have this Rockford Fosgate terminal on top, along with this one at the side. The battery's about four years old, so uh, I think that might be time to replace it. I got to get a really strong battery because it's a big motor to do. Uh, I want to figure out what the cold cranking amps on this one are. They're about 1,000, actually 800. So, all right, the reserve capacity, 50 amp hours. And in the front, again, I want to just note down what's here. Uh, before I start pulling stuff off. So we have the, it's not even tied down. We have the negative right here, positive. And then on top we have positive and negative again. Okay, the battery is out. Uh, that's a really cute battery tray, but the battery is out. Now onto the carburetor. So this is a quick beer to see where things are at uh, in case I have to undo anything. I wanna make sure that when I put things back to the right way, but this thing just reeks of fuel. So we're going to take it off, disassemble it, and see what we can clean up. All right, Chad doesn't know this, but I actually borrowed his uh, fuel line clamping tool. And what this does is because that's the fuel line that goes to the carb, I have to make sure I clamp that off because once I disconnect it from the top end, uh, fuel is going to start kind of spraying everywhere. So I'm just going to tighten this down. So it makes a nice clamp on this line so that when I actually go to unscrew it, it's not gonna cause a big ruckus. And here we go. Not a drop of gas. Not bad. Yeah. That smells pungent. Mm -hmm. It really stings the nostrils. How we do, how we well, the, other, the, the other thing too is uh, I'm a little concerned about is the, uh, when I flipped it over, some of the fuel's leaking out, but look how it's coming out. Oh. It's almost like you smell it. It smells like oil and uh, uh, varnish. Mm -hmm. mm. Sniff that. It's so it's been, oh, you can't sniff it. I'm sorry. So it's been That's sitting for a while. This probably, <laughs> because the car's been sitting, yeah. they probably yeah. could go for a potential tank draining, AKA driving it. And then there's probably no fuel filter. Yeah, that was the other thing Rich and I were discussing, like uh, like the fact that they may not have a fuel filter in this. Yeah. So they're no if it's old, there. old metal tank. Yeah. There's probably junk floating around which killed the carb. All right, so really quick, here's something interesting about this car. There were a lot of issues with it hard starting. We couldn't really figure out what was going on. This is a manual choke carburetor. And the choke is actually frozen on this. So this would have never really worked for anyone's. But the thing is, before I opened it up, I did some uh, part number matching and it looks like this is a 600 CFM carburetor, which is actually too small for the 454 that's in that dually right now. So this is, the carb is actually undersized for the truck. So even if we were to clean this and, and fix this choke, the carburetor is still undersized. What they recommend for a truck that big with the engine that big, the 454, is they recommend a 750 CFM carb. So that's what we're gonna go today. I'm gonna go to my favorite store, pick one of those up, replace it, and then come right back. All right, hey, got the new carburetor. See, so you did. Didn't want to have to do this. And, um, 
Yeah. So yeah, it's the, sitting on the linkage. Actually, so you, yeah. you need that's what you need is a spacer, not. So what this is, this is a a bore changer. Mm -hmm. So it goes from a wide bore to a narrow bore. But this is but that's already the wrong one. This so, is already a wide bore. So, so where do they have this? In the, do they have this at, at a, a parts store? Yes, we can get that at a parts store. Okay. So, and a new gasket while we're at it. Yeah. yeah hopefully it comes with good board. All right, Chad. What are we doing right now, Chad? Uh, we're doing a parts run. Still in the key truck. What are this thing? Look at this thing. I should have got this instead. That piece of crap. Look at you. This look thing at, is so much fun. Look how much fun Chad's having. Look, I'm on the wrong side of the road. Look at this. This feels illegal, Chad. It does. <laughs> we got the parts. Chad. It looks like I'm gonna drive, but I'm not. Can I put this in the back? Is it gonna fly away, Chad? It might fly away. Oh gosh. Yeah. So the people that sold the truck, this thing barely ran. It. it I'm. I don't even think it did run. Honestly. Nope. Because the, the choke was frozen. It was a manual choke that was stuck open. How would you even begin to figure anything out? But whatever. Thanks for, thank you, seller, for selling to a sucker like myself. Because uh, that is what I am. Notice how he does the shake. Yeah. He's like, oh. that's not going yep. anywhere. He didn't even pat it. He just kind of. Like, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, it did go somewhere. That, and, and it went. Oh, no. Sucking on that beverage. Oh God, what is it now? No, it's okay. It's just, we were very excited when we opened this. Mm -hmm. So you always read the instructions. It's going to go in here and make sure we got the right vacuum ports. Yeah. You know, and then I'm like. The gift oh, of CD-ROM. A DVD player. <laughs> <laughs> All you need is a DVD player. That's hilarious. Well, the fact that they're actually doing that with paper instructions on top of it, that's, that's pretty impressive. Most of the time they give you a pamphlet and say, good luck. No, but it shows you their, Thanks, their demographic. Who has a DVD player? Yeah. The people that buy carburetors. If you have a carburetor. If you have a carburetor, you already know. You're you probably, already know. You're probably old, which is fine. <laughs> that's, that's, and that's, you probably don't look like me, which is also fine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Yeah. All right. The guy at the source said it. He goes, don't see your type around here. <laughs> I don't see any of your kind here. <laughs> what the hell? He what said weird, that to you? What a weird thing to say. What a son of a... Let's make sure this UFO looking spacecraft fits. Freaking unreal. Take me to leader. Wow. All right. Yeah, there's there's enough. There should be enough clearance for fuel line. Turn me on a little bit. I'm a little roused. Oh God, I don't want to get him too excited. <laughs> it's, it's skinny, but it's still. <laughs> oh jeez. I don't know what happened. Just cleaning it and it went off. That's gonna be <laughs> yeah. a video. Yeah, yeah. I want to see you explain that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fortunately, Tom, we don't have to explain it. Well, yeah, thank Good. God. It's just what happens. But I'll tell you one thing, Tom. When my mom called me and said, I watched your last video, it always sends this chill down my spine. I'm sure it Every does. Every single time. The yeah, fortunate thing is, she, those usually go over her head. I have, I have a few questions. She's innocent. I have a few questions about the, some things that you said in your last video. <laughs> she, like, oh, yeah? <laughs> uh, mom, let me call you back. I gotta, I gotta run. Mom, we love you. Hey there, bunny. How are you, man? Ah, uh, yep. That's the effect I have on people. Yeah. This, dude, look at this. Look at, I tell you, this. This was melted, right? Look at this. Yep, that's what melted. Good old fashioned butt cut. Ooh, wee. Yeah. Not only that, but that, if you follow that wonderful wire up, guess where it goes? Alternator. Oh, look at that. It, it's the wire. That's from another the alternator. Crummy. I almost want to replace that whole wire. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the thing I wanted to take off the most. Hold on there, cowboy. We got a couple wires underneath. And... Oh, for the lighting. For there's, the. Uh... There's one in the middle. Only one, two. Yeah, yeah I feel them. Oh, tall Did boy Brian. Both? That's amazing. Can you can you jump on? Look how long look how long his arms are. They're seven feet long. It's amazing. Only. Stretch Armstrong over here. His one. Look at Brian go. Look how long he, look how long he is. Brian, your wife must be a lucky lady, because you could reach all that stuff in the cabinet. You know what I mean? All the high up stuff. And all the you stuff don't need in the grocery store, too. You don't need one of those grab you know, you know those, you know those little robotic clamp hands that you could yeah. pick stuff up? Brian's, yeah. like, ahead of that. Oh, baby. Yeah. Hey, it's like pulling the fender flares off the Duramax. I know. They actually use the lights on this? Apparently they did. You got a knife? Cut those, cut those suckers real quick? Cut them. Might as well. Ah, yes, Stephen. Thank you for cutting them short. <laughs> Making never, I can't, I can never put that back again. So what if I change my mind? You weren't going to. That's true. I was this, not. This is 88.98. Damn. Not for yours. Man. Yeah. See, now it's looking better already. 
Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. This is looking more proper. Yep. Those mirrors, really those mirrors have to go. Oh, I, those mirrors are terrible. I, I, have, I have the new mirrors already. I, that's the, one of the first things I got. I was like, nope, don't like those. What are you holding up for me? What is that? This is as it's removed from the truck. There were no at least twist connectors on it or anything? No, just, you know. Just twist it. Twist them together. That works, right? Oh, my Definitely God. Definitely won't ground out against anything. No, it wasn't just laying in the carpet, rubbing on the fiber. Oh, you. Definitely not. <laughs> you, you, you. Wow. All right. Well, cool. Thank you, previous owner. Actually, I have the previous owner's info. Uh, he's, he's on the registration. Well, so I course. might actually give him a call like, hey, man. Hey, uh, hey man. We should film it. I'm going to send him this video. <laughs> hey, I don't know who you are, but uh, I have your truck. This is going live. Yeah. I'm Just as tearing is. into your vehicle. And oh, by the way. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm also going to dox you by posting your address. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Poor Michael. <laughs> I know. Everybody thought Michael's address was real. Everyone, no, it was Look not. Look closer. Look harder. <laughs> harder. <laughs> Look closer. Look harder, people. <laughs> Steven? Mm-hmm. It's time. Everything's connected as it should be. Except the air cleaner on top, but yeah, yeah, that's not yeah, that's important. Just, okay. No one needs that. You don't um, need clean air, do you? Not right, right now. Uh, not right. Automatic choke. <laughs> connected? Yep. Do we need clean air? I don't know, but I suspect this is going to work a hell of a lot better than the old car did. This is bigger. It flows more. It's meant to be on this engine. The other car was too small. The choke was stuck open. I mean, yeah. so many things wrong. So many were wrong. Yeah. So let's try it out. But, I've, <laughs> but I feel like I can really do it. Like, think about this for a second, right? So someone sold me this truck and yep. I purchased it, mm -hmm. right? I think we could mass produce patina trucks. I mean, do you want more iron oxide? You want more paint? What do you want? You want I a think, balance? I think we could have more paint and we could have some skulls too. And I think there's a target. I think there's a market for this. There is. God. There's an ask for every seat. For you sure. know? So you want Stephen to have a question for you? What? How do you find that audience? How do you scale that business? Where are they? Who are Where they? People. Are your campaigns working? They gotta be. You know? They just gotta be. You know what, Stephen? What? That's where a test comes in. It's a consumer resource platform that provides confidence for every decision. It makes it simple and fast to access your target customers. It tells you who your target customers are and is your brand activity even working? It has a consumer research platform that's easy to use, quick and insightful reporting. Get started today with a test. Go to askatest.com slash rich rebuilds or just click the link below and start growing your own business today, Steve. You could grow your business. You could do stuff like we're doing right now, right? Don't we do enough? We're painting patina on trucks. That's what we do now. That's true. You know? Man. Freaking exhaust pipe flattened. <laughs> oh, oh, they were doing some dragon. Oh, wow. Wait, where's the bell housing? Yes. Yes. It's about time. Thank goodness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they were trying to hide that the whole time. What the hell? Yeah. Not quite sure what the hell. I don't know what was going on there. It's really interesting. The more you look, the more you find. How about the relay harness that was in there? Was that for the, for the horn? Yes. Okay, so do you take the that out? Relay horn is harness this thing. That was for the horns. Which All right. I can take so out. we'll pull those. But there, there's um, another, there was another relay on the fender, I think, that tied into this. So I'll have to look at that again. But that's the thing. I don't get what those aftermarket fans are for because the main fan still works. Right. So and I don't know why they added those. What's stranger is, that, uh, as I saw it, we put it up, so it looks like this is 
third electric fan in here mm. in the front grill area. Yeah, so I, I thought there were two in the front. I thought yeah. there were two in there. There are two small ones and then one big one. No, so there's one right here. Can you see them right here? Look, yeah, there's two back there, but look, there's one right here. Oh, yeah. A fourth? There's three. There's so, 19 fans in this Yeah, so there's this one here, <laughs> the two yeah, electrics, and then yeah. the, the big mechanical. The they big really, mechanical, I don't understand why they did what they did with that. They really want to cool this thing down, don't they? Well, that worries me. If they have that much, that many fans on it, exactly. why? I know. I, I, I know. Is it running that hot? And if it's running that hot, why is it running that hot? Now, having that 600 CFM carburetor on would make it run lean, which would also make it run hot. That then, on top of that, if they did something stupid with the timing to make it run better with that carburetor, that would also like right, change the temperature. Done that too. So absolutely, you're gonna have to go through that and give it like a thorough tune-up, time it, just to carburetor properly, not just a quick down and mm -hmm. dirty way. I did it, and then nope, I gotta get a real timing light, do it yep. the right way. No, yep. I get it. I don't like these relays the way they do this. Oh, that's terrible. No, they're just dangling there. Well, none Those... of that, but they're, they're not even weather packed. These are just nope. wire nope. stuffed in the inner. And, and when I when I got it, they were tilted down. I had to like. Okay because one of them stopped working, yeah. I had to pull the things off and like sand them down yeah. to make them start working. Like I said, they, like there's uh, some areas of air suspension that do a really good job, and other areas you're like, what, what is this I think crap? the truck was passed off to multiple people, Yeah. and it was, you know, kind of like, oh, you take it, oh, you take it. Yeah. Look at that, poor thing got pancaked. My goodness, guys. My goodness, what are you doing? So, as of right now, those airbags are staying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, that tank's staying. That's a decent tank. Well, like I said, the fact that they have an airline fitting on is pretty. No, that's gnarly, man. This thing seems pretty solid. You can, or you can actually work on it with the air tools on your own truck. So right. That's kind of helpful. It'll just take you six hours to fill it back up. That's right. All. Yeah. I was expecting a tank train. Is it a water trap? That, no, that's. There's no water drains on these. What? There's no, no water trap. trap. No water yeah. trap. Nothing. This is just a tank. There is no low point drain on it. So if there's moisture in there or water in there. There's water in there. It's best I eat away at it. Oh yeah. Look at that brake line. It's flattened in between the, the control arm. I see it. Oh yeah, wow. Yeah. Look at that. That's squash thump right yeah. there. That should have been under that knuckle, not right over. There. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was a that was a bad move. That was a bad big mistake. Yeah, they did it on both sides. Uh, the exhaust gaskets are blown out. I yep. can see into the exhaust pipe. I see them. Oh, that uh, that could be a problem. What what is e brake? E brake cable. It's just it's just like legitimately tucked. Ah, in. that's the that's the random brake light. Okay, now here's here's the fun part. Let's just cut to the chase here. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. It's not even welded, right? I saw this side earlier. So they just kind of like snot welded back and forth. Mm hmm. Oh, the way they put the cut. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a no. The way I would have done it. If you go further back. Yeah. So this is what I was looking at. I was looking at the welding on this. Uh huh. You know, looking around, I'm like, okay, they did this crazy reinforcement with for a panar bar, which is you know kind of cool idea. But when you have huh. one, oh, yeah. one actually somewhat welded, it's not welded and not welded. Right, that's just kind of floating there. <laughs> it's like a tack up top. They just kind of tacked yeah. it and said, hey, even more important, look at this. I'm not supposed to, be able to stick my finger yeah, in there, no. am I? Nope. What the heck is that? The bolt in the frame is loose, so the shock is crooked. See how the, how the bolt's going up in a. Yeah. Angle? Oh, you got a leak. Is that the, the oil here. pressure sensor? Coming down here. So it might be the fitting in the block, or it could be the actual. The threads, the threads or, something. or something yeah yeah it's just marking its territory the thing you got everybody's gonna put in their mind is this is a big block mm -hmm. it, it needs to breathe it's not breathing look look at these this these pipes are way too small look, for this look motor. At this. it's kind of so concerning it goes to the collectors which are large it squashes down to like an inch and a half it seems like yeah, squashes it's down again big. gets bigger everything's cool everything's cool goes into these, and so. it goes into these yeah awesome it's fine oh wait no it's a reducer again yeah. <laughs> and then it gets, and then at the end of it, it's tiny. Yeah. Well, look at this stuff. Oh my gosh, guys. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. This Come on. I, I love it when you get it like one of those dualies that are slammed to the ground and they mm -hmm. got a fifth wheel on towing another low rider. Yes. That that's, makes my heart. Uh, I love pump. that. I love that. That, that makes my heart. But pump. it has to be done right, not this. right. Because no. if you go down the street and the trailer's just doing this, yanking, and the thing's going like, you're no. like, 
You would, if yeah. anyone pulls anything with this, they're as good as they're gone. Yeah. You're not going to make it. Yeah. Neither is the person behind you when it lets go. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I'm not, I'm not impressed. How are you feeling there, Big O? <sighs> it's not good, man. It's not good. But you know what? I'm not scared, Stephen. I'm not scared. Here's why I'm not scared. So I just asked Chad. I was like, Chad, what would he do in this situation? Um... I think, WWCD. What would Chad do? And I don't really know what he said, but I do know that. I never ever listens to me. Yeah, I now, listen to you, Chad. Now this, now that, now that this video is out and you're currently watching it, I can't sell this truck to anyone. <laughs> like if the, if you look at you know as our 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 favorite uh, truck driver Whistling Diesel, he took a lot of really nice trucks. So what people thought were nice trucks. Uh, like the Ford pickup that he had uh, a few a few months ago, and he started wrecking it, running it into uh, into street poles. But if you look underneath it, there were booger welds. Like the thing was just horribly built. So with me having this, people watching this video, I couldn't consciously bring myself to selling this to anyone. You know what I mean? Like the ideal, the smart thing to do would be to say, "Hey, I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to get rid of this thing and bring another one in." But who do I give this to? There's there's rust. There's rust in the rockers. Uh, the air, the air brakes are ready to. Sorry, the air suspension is who knows what. The relays are, are rusted out. The the brake lines are getting pinched in the front. The brake lines are getting pinched in the rear. Uh, the e brake does not work. It's not even there. It's not even it there. Doesn't exist. Uh, yeah. The bags are dry rotted. Well, the rear bags are dry rotted. The rear frame notching. That was a terrible job. There's booger welds everywhere. Uh, in the rear, there's also the uh, the hitch mount. That's terrible. The yeah. fifth wheel, that's terrible. There's a rat's nest underneath the dashboard. There's a rat's nest of wiring. I don't know what goes where. So like, realistically, I couldn't, I know a lot of people could sleep at night selling it to someone. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So I'm gonna take the L and I'm just gonna shrug my shoulders and say, hey, listen, this is an example of why you don't buy things on Facebook Marketplace sight unseen. Because honestly, if I saw it first and spent the uh, $125 to take a, a ticket down to Texas, uh, I could have saved myself a considerable amount of money. So I learned a lesson and this is... Uh, Did you? I'll do it again. Yeah. You know, you know, I'll do it again, you know that. Can you make it off again? Or did it deflate the back? No, I, I have I have tech that can go at least go up once. Can you go up maybe like half? And then so I can actually drive it and then we'll then we're kind of done. Perfect. So I just noticed that Steven took my wallet. I got the slick one from Ridge because I didn't want a George Costanza wallet. You too can get one without it being a misdemeanor. Go to ridgewallet.com and get 10% off when you use code Rich. Thanks for watching, but even more importantly, I have a question for you. What do I do with this thing? Would you want to see me restore it? Do you want it? Or should I let Whistling Diesel give it a good send off? Let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to check me on Instagram at Richie B Kid. And I will see you all soon.